Welcome back to Empathy Channel, the best place to learn table tennis. Why we can't use a super thick rubber in table tennis? Thin versus thick rubber in table tennis? History of thick table tennis sponge. In my experience, max sponges give you more spin, therefore more control. The fact is thinner sponges go long more often when hit hard. Using a thinner sponge, you will have less spin, less power. Hiroji Sato was the first player to play competitively with a sponge rubber in 1952. He won two medals in the singles and team events in the World Table Tennis Championships. And he used a 10 mm thick rubber. Yes, 10 mm thick rubber. In the coming years, almost all top class players used rackets covered with a thick sponge but 10 millimeters thick is too much. The International Table Tennis Federation has allowed the total thickness is four millimeters. Thick total thickness is the sum of the top sheet and the sponge. The top sheet thickness is about 1.8 millimeters, so the maximum sponge thickness is about 2.2 to 2.3 millimeters. As the tournament started, there were all sorts of um, rumors about the Japanese. The Japanese had invented a new kind of racket, a Japan, invented by a Japanese scientist. They were practicing in secret behind closed doors. Nobody was allowed to watch them play. And so, of course, you know, we, we had a kind of a, uh, you know, the American cockiness, uh, the Europeans felt the same way about it. We just discovered the Japanese. There's nobody. We reign supreme in table tennis. This is our game. We developed it. We have the games. I mean, what chance do, you know, the Japanese or the players from Hong Kong have against us? So in Bombay, the 19th World Table Tennis Championships reached the final stage. Nobody in the stadium watching the event from the moment he unsheathed the racket from his case, realized Hiroji Sato was about to revolutionize the game and for all time transform table tennis into a totally different sport. Sato was the worst player on the Japanese team. As a matter of fact, People were wondering why he was even, he, he was very, he was not kneed. I mean, he looked like he came from out of space. Sato walked out to the table to play against Richard Berkman. And I'll never forget, he was wearing, he had a little case under his arm. Took out the case, unzipped it, and took out a racket that has about an inch of foam or a half inch of foam on either side. And he started at a few shots across the net, and we couldn't hear the ball. And the sponge bats uh, came, these thick sponge bats in 1952, and this is what the players heard. Nothing. The traditional player couldn't play against the sponge bat because he couldn't hear the sound of the ball. It wasn't only the mystery of where the ball was going, they couldn't rely on that usual tool of sound. And I, I can't, you know, express that enough, that the sound, you know, we, we've, we've had blind referees who could determine, you know, great shot on table 23 without even seeing the ball. Nobody really understood what was happening, the amount of spin because the ball reversed itself. It's a very complicated kind of thing. The response off the racket with the sponge is entirely different from the pimpled rubber. It's a kind of catapult. Whatever effect you put on the ball, it comes back at you with twice the effect. So they didn't, they were losing against their own spins. They were losing against the, the beauty of their own game. <laughs> Hiroji Sato of Japan, who has not lost a single match since his arrival in Bombay, created history by becoming the men's singles champion of the world in his very first attempt. He won in three straight games against Joseph Kotian of Hungary. He was more surprised than anyone else when he found himself the world singles champion. 
and uh, he was uh, received by a million people, they say, who lined the streets of Tokyo to greet back their first world champion, not only in table tennis, but in any athletic sports ever. Um, but uh, really it represents a technological milestone in the sport, and so I would like to, uh, to be able to share it with the fans, you know. We have a lot of people pointing at the, the rackets in this particular case, and that's always a sign of a, an interesting exhibit. You know. About thick and thin rubbers. Thin rubbers are the rubbers with the thickness smaller than 1.9 millimeters. Thin rubbers are 1.5 millimeters, 1.7 millimeters, 1.9 millimeters. While thick rubbers are the rubbers from 2.0 millimeters to max thickness, 2.2 millimeters to 2.3 millimeters. It is a well-known fact in table tennis that a thinner sponge yields superior control while a thicker sponge provides more speed but with less control. As a result, it is entirely possible to moderate the speed of a fast racket by employing a rubber with a thinner sponge. In fact, some players choose to use a fast offensive rubber on their forehand and a slower, more manageable sheet on their backhand to achieve optimal control and speed. As a table tennis coach with expertise in table tennis equipment, I can attest that a thicker sponge is specially designed for those who employ an aggressive playing style and prioritize maximum impact speed. The reduction in the ball's contact time with the racket that results from a thicker sponge yields more speed, but less control. Key characteristics of a thick sponge are Enhanced ball speed and spin Best suited for skilled players sacrifices control for speed yields a heavier feel overall not recommended for beginners for players who desire to generate the most speed and spin without being too reliant on their racket for control a thicker rubber 2.0 millimeters or greater would be an ideal option conversely a thin sponge affords greater control and is generally more forgiving particularly for less experienced players while offensive players tend to prefer thicker sponges, players who prefer a defensive playing style or recreational players who require extra assistance in controlling the ball typically opt for a softer sponge. Key attributes of a thin sponge are Slower ball speed but greater control Best suited for defensive play and push shots Ideal for recreational players not appropriate for elite players who demand greater spin generation. Yields a lighter feel overall. For players who prioritize control and a defensive playing style over all-out attack, a thinner sponge, 1.9 millimeters or less, is a perfect fit. Additionally, if you are a recreational player who requires a little bit of forgiveness and control assistance, a thin rubber is an excellent option. Conclusion Best Sponge Thickness Here is my final advice. Choose the thickest and fastest rubber you can. By forcing using this setup, you will need to improve your power. It's better for your development. It depends on your hitting power. But don't choose too thin rubber, or too soft rubber, even you are a new player. Don't choose rubber that is thinner than 2.0 millimeters. For the backhand side, choose something between 2.0 mm, new player, to 2.2, or max, intermediate player. For the forehand side, choose 2.1 mm or max. For the Chinese rubber, you need to tune, so choose 2.1 to 2.15 mm. Don't select a max thickness for Chinese rubber. Because boosting a max thickness, the total thickness will higher than 4.0 millimeters, which is illegal. The sponge absorbs the booster and expand. I've explained how to boost Chinese forehand rubber here. To improve fast, you need to train like a pro with similar types of equipment of the advanced players.